630 and I hereby call the order of this meeting, this regular scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board. Our first order of business will be to approve the minutes of our October 2nd meeting. Do I have a motion? I have a motion we approve the minutes from October 2nd. Second. We have a motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Right. Not hearing any discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing. Thank you. All right, so we have one or one uh, piece of new business today, and that is to uh, appoint Tom Feidenkevitt to the Veterans Memorial Committee. We got a request from Tom to be appointed to that committee, and here we are. Yep, we it's a three-member committee. There are currently two vacancies, um, so if there's anybody else watching at home and is interested in the Veterans Memorial Committee, there is a vacancy. Um, yeah, with, with Tom, at least they have quorum, though, so yes. that's kind of key. All right, um, is there any discussion about appointing him? It's great. I think it's wonderful. Oh. Thank, thank you, Tommy. <laughs> Looks like Cynthia, Cindy has a question. I do. Uh, those appointments are staggered for one year, two year, or three year appointments. So you probably should um, assign a, uh, a term to it. Do we know what the current member's term is? I really don't. I would imagine it's a three year term at this point. I know, I'm not positive, though. I could double check that. I mean, I'd be comfortable setting it for a three year term for Tommy unless we have a reason to think that that's a bad idea. I don't have any reason to think it's a bad idea. Yeah, and he was, um, Mr. Hearn, who's the other member, was appointed in June. So if it was a three year term in June, it would be somewhat staggered. Okay. Or you can appoint him for a two and a half year term. Yeah, let's, let's appoint him for a two and a half term, getting back in the same cadence as, as June. So that way he'll be a year behind Mr. Hearn. And that way, if we do get a third member, we can have that every three years staggered. Okay. Does that work, Cindy? Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. So at this time, I would Thank entertain you. a motion to appoint Tom for a two year, eight month, or whatever it is, term to June of 2026. So moved. All right. Second. We have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing. Congratulations, Tom. Thank you very much for that. We appreciate your service there. All right, that's it for new business. Next up under old business, we have the Sunderland Cannabis License Transfer, which we had discussed at our last meeting. Um, so go ahead and take us up there. Yeah. Um, so we just, I think, the wanted to give the select board a little bit of time to familiarize the, yourselves um, with some of the, the cannabis procedures. Um, we heard about the Townsend family who's going to be um, taking over. It came up to me. I don't think we got the name. Do you guys have a, a name for the company yet? Uh, no, not yet. They're, they're working on the name of the company. Right now, it's just the, the Townsend family. Okay. Okay. So um, that's kind of okay. Yep. And so the only other thing that I was going to mention is... Uh, the Cannabis Control Commission recently passed new regulations. Some of those regulations change um, host community agreements. So um, in addition to if you're going to approve the transfer, it would be great to authorize me to at least start talking to them about changing the host community agreement to bring it into compliance with the new regulations. Obviously, I'd bring anything back to the select board for final signature, but... Do you know what type of stuff is changed in it? Yes, um, there, there are a couple things. The major things are above and beyond the 3% um, sales is not allowed for any reason whatsoever. Um, and then the other major shift, I think, and, and feel free to correct me, Peter, if there are other things, is um, it's no longer a proactive payment by the company to the town. Um, it's more a reimbursement of receipts. So we show them what we spent the money on and how it <coughs> equaled 3% or less of their revenue. And then they come back and say, okay, here's the money for those impacts. Okay. All right. Um, is there any discussion that needs to be had? Okay, no. Nope, I'm good. Okay. At this time, I would entertain a vote to both transfer the one, or sorry, transfer the cannabis license um, license to the new owners as well as authorize Jeff to um, investigate the changes needed to the host agreement. So moved. Second. All right. We have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing. Congratulations, gentlemen. We look forward to working with you.
Thank you so much. We're so excited to be in the town, and we really look forward to uh, being able to deliver a project here. So thank you so much. And uh, we'll, Jeff, I'll, I'll wait to hear from you uh, after you had an opportunity to connect with uh, council, and then we'll just go from there. Great. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks right. everybody. Have a great day. Um, next up on our old business is the one-day live entertainment license policy. Yes. Let's listen to that. So, um, looked at, at several towns that offered one-day licenses that seemed to be about our size. Just kind of, you know, Boston, Cambridge, because they have a lot more resources. Um, the fee varied from twenty to fifty dollars. Uh, our annual fee, I believe, is um, fifty dollars. So, probably want to make it closer to twenty mm -hmm. for one day. Um, there's also a required state entertainment permit on Sundays. So if they want to do the live entertainment on Sunday, we're asking for additional time and uh, uh, additional $5, which is the state's cost. Um, created an application form that is essentially the same as the one day liquor license application with just different information. It asks for the name and address of the applicant, who's the responsible manager, the dates, the manager's phone, um, hours of the event, number of attendees, a description, um, and then it helps them through a checklist. Is it on Sunday? Then you have to do this. If you're serving alcohol, you, you know, so it sort of helps walk them through that. Mm -hmm an opportunity to um, add any restrictions that we wanted to. Um, yeah, no, I, my recommendation was a $20 fee um, that can be waived for, for the, the town part. Um, we would also, you know, when, once we got the application, pass it along to the police chief, the fire chief, building commissioner, um, and board of health, just like we do for a one day liquor license to make sure there are no concerns or issues. Um, one of the things that was discussed that, that I'll raise is it, in other towns, the, the applicant actually goes to each department and gets the department heads sign off on the document. Um, it's more onerous on the applicant, um, but then you have a document that says, yeah, the police chief actually did say it's, you know, I mean, I, I'm okay with, with having the email, which is what we typically do for alcohol, but I did want to raise it um, because it, it's something that other towns do and uh, I do see some value in it. I mean, I, I think that there's definitely value in getting that sign off one way or the other, whether it has to be physical brought by the applicant or whether it's via email, um, I don't, I don't really see a whole lot of benefit in forcing them to run around and, and do that versus just shooting off a couple emails. Yeah. Well, and I think too the the limited time availability of somebody like our fire chief. Right. It, it's not like he has Monday through Friday eight to five office yeah. hours where somebody can easily. You know, and I'm not saying he's. We can get a hold of him, yes, but it's not quite as easy as. Right. I'm also not looking to add any more duties on our our department either. An email is a five minute thing you can do when you're sitting in the bathroom versus having to schedule time with somebody to come in on on your one or a couple of days and whatever. You know, there's a world of difference between those two things. Mm -hmm. um, so unless there's a real objection, I'm fine with leaving it as. I'm fine with leaving it as is. Yeah. I okay. do have a question. Do we know what the turnaround time is for the state? when somebody applies for a Sunday license? I don't. I know that it's not a one-day Sunday license. They're applying for, we can have entertainment any Sunday. Um, the towns that I've seen have asked for three weeks to 30 days plus extra time if they're asking for a Sunday event. Right, so, so that's what I'm curious, what the extra time for a Sunday event is. Are we talking another additional month are we talking an additional couple weeks yeah i would say that if somebody applies you know six weeks ahead of time that should be plenty of time i would definitely also word it as and the amount of time that you give you know if you don't give enough time and the state doesn't come back in time that's not our fault like you behoove you to come to us as soon as possible because the more time you give the more time 
the right. tape has and all that. Yep. And she pulled yep. writing a lot of extra time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Try to make it clear. Right. No, I saw that, but that's yep. right. That's subjective, right? Yeah. Yep. yep. Is extra time two days? Is yeah. extra time thirty days? Yep. Thirty days. Agreed. Agreed. Yep. Agreed. Yeah. And and I'll, I'll mention this since you know it. You know, we don't send it to the state until the select board's approved it. So you know. If there's back and forth or questions, that might delay it as well. Um, it's not like we can just send it off to the state and do our thing while they're doing their thing. Yeah, so you might, again, if we're looking at someone applying for, you know, and I, I just, I want this to be easy for the person doing it. I want it to be easy for us. I'm wondering if we really need 60 days for a Sunday event because what happens, again, if we do have a back and forth, we need them to come back and talk to us. What happens if it's in the summer when we're only meeting every other week? Yeah, yeah I, I might be con convinced to change it to th 30 days, Monday through Friday, entire day, 60 Six days, days, Sunday, days Sunday, and just set it as that being the yeah. requirement. And if we have more than enough time, great. And if, if after you know the first five of these we get in the next couple of years, we find that, that it's way more time than we need, we can always come back and adjust the policy down the line and cut it down. But I think that, that I think Crystal's right on that, that it really, we need an extra month if it's gonna be this day. I mean, I don't think people are gonna, you know, do an overnight, oh, Sunday, let's get out. Yeah, yep. I don't think so. It's usually something planned. And like I said, I don't want to have to deny somebody this because we didn't have enough time to, right. to you know, yeah. deal with a Sunday event. So do you want us to hold off on approving this until next week when you have a chance to make those couple little tweaks to it, or do you want us to just approve pending those tweaks? And Yeah, um, I mean, I, I think the tweak that I would do is instead of allow extra time, I would say allow 30 extra days yeah. right there. Um, yeah, I'd put it right on the top, too. Yeah. Application must be submitted Sunday. right thirty days prior to the event, or sixty if days if, if, if Sunday, on a Sunday. On Sunday. Right. Yep. Um, I mean, those are small enough changes. Yeah. And if, if we agree on them now, I'm comfortable with yeah. approving it. As oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so at this time, I would entertain a motion to approve the one-day live entertainment policy um, as presented with the changes made by Jeff. So moved. Second. All right. We have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing. Thank you for all that work on that, Jeff. We appreciate it. Actually, I do have one other question. It's <laughs> going to have nothing to do with the pol this policy or anything. It's for my own knowledge. When can a one-day liquor license override a, their any businesses actual liquor license to change capacity so say your your permanent liquor license you know that you renew and everything else is for a hundred people and you want to have an event that is 200 people big can you get a one-day liquor license to override yeah. that 100 up to 200. So that is a good question. Um, so I th think that probably depends, and, and Cindy, jump in if you know the answer. Um, I think that the number of that the number of people for the liquor license depends on the capacity of the of the space and so if they if the business can increase the capacity of the space um and the building commissioner and board of health are okay i believe that that would be acceptable um i believe that also an annual liquor license has areas where liquor can be served and they can bring in another server in a different location and that might also be able to increase um, the amount of people, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, no, I'm just thinking like, you know, because we have residents, people who get the one day liquor license, like say for the town park, yep. to have an event there. And, you know, 
they're telling us, you know, a rough number of people that are going to be invited to the event, and no problem. I was just wondering if something like that. It looks like Cindy has her hand raised. Cindy, do you want to add something to that? I do. So, um, businesses who currently hold a liquor license may not hold an additional liquor license. So, on their property, um, for instance, if somebody wanted to have something in the parking lot, we had a business that wanted to have a, a wine tasting in the parking lot outside of their regular licensed business. They're not allowed to do that. Someone else could pull that license to do that, but not the current liquor license holder. I am going to ask the ABCC, because it's on my list of to-do, um, everybody has a capacity for their, for their license. That is based on the building square footage that's assigned to the building. That goes to the ABCC, and that's what their liquor license is granted for. That's based that amount of people capacity. So increasing it, I'm not sure that's allowed. In a given period in that same space and that's my question that i'm going to be asking the abcc yeah so the license I, I, you have to put sorry you have to put in the amount of space how many tables you have the square footage it the people capacity all that is part of your liquor license application and that is on that approved form that comes back from the state and that's what you're held to yeah so in that example you used where they want to do a wine tasting in the parking lot that's outside of their square footage if somebody somebody different maybe the wine vendor or whoever would have to be the one to pull that one day license to use the parking lot right yeah okay. yep. anybody else can pull that license if they're willing to take that responsibility um, We've had that with other events in town and somebody else had to pull the liquor license. They can do that, but the actual license owner or yeah. holder can't do that. They okay. can't have an additional license okay. in the pro on the property. Hmm. Great, thank you for that clarification, Cindy. And if, if you do hear back from the ABCC, please let us know what they say because I'm very curious about that myself. Yeah, same, I will for sure. Thank you, appreciate it. Any other discussion on the one day permit while we're here? No. All right. Um, next up, we have select board updates. Um, I'll get us kicked off on that. I uh, had a meeting of the capital, uh, or sorry, the Frontier Capital Planning Committee um, this past week. We talked about the new roof. Um, the roof is 30 years old, and it's like a 20-year roof or something like that. So it's well past its point of needing to be replaced. Um, there's a bunch of leaking, uh, a bunch of places that are pre-leaking, um, going to be leaking soon. We've gone over the last two meetings we've had. We've gone over different options. Um, and we've kind of settled on one of the more conventional, um, you know, put a bunch of insulation on top of the existing roof and then another roof on top of that to add some R value and also waterproofing and whatnot. Um, Budget-wise, Frontier is actually in a really good position to be able to get this done without having to come back to the towns and ask for a pile of money. They've been stashing money away, um, they've been conservative with their other projects, um, and they've ended up with more money um, from various sources than they expected, so they're actually in a very good position there. Um, so hopefully that won't end up being an ask to the towns for more money, um, which is good. And also the, the um, capital stabilization fund that we approved for them is, is helping with that also because it gives them a place for them to squirrel away the money that they're going to be setting aside for this so that we don't come to <laughs> the project itself and be like, all right, we need a million dollars this year. Um, so that's, that's definitely good news. Um, Thank you, Darius, for all the work on that. I know he, he's worked really hard to get that all uh, all in line. Um, that's it for me. Anything from you, Crystal? I had nothing this past couple of weeks. Yeah, I'm quiet this week. Beautiful. All right. Um, so that's it for us. Jeff, do you have some town administrator updates for us? Yeah, uh, a couple things. Um, the oil tank replacement at the elementary school. Um, the contractor wasn't confident that the tank would be delivered within the time frame that they originally gave so the contract has just <coughs> been amended to say that the work will be done within 60 days of delivery of the tank they don't think it's going to be a huge you know delay but um wanted to mention that uh, the police department got a almost $12,000 National Highway Safety Administration grant for Municipal Road Safety Program. That's um, enforcement, education, 
um, those types of things. So that will be going on throughout the year. Um, I think I may have mentioned earlier that they got a community services organization um, grant and they're working through that because it's a, a regional grant. And then um, there's also a JAG grant, and I'm forgetting what that stands for, that's still outstanding. But that's um, some of the stuff the police are doing on that topic. Later this month is the, Paul, uh, the Fall Public Safety Festival at the elementary school. That's going to be on October 28th from 3 to 8 p.m. And then the last thing I wanted to mention is uh, the treasurer and I met with our with Maya, who gives our health insurance, and they indicated that they thought the average increase for their towns um, was going to be between seven and eight percent. Um, they said that we also had some high claims, so ours might be higher than that. Uh, and I wanted to mention it because another thing that we had talked about relative to insurance is after upping the employee contribution 5% last year, um, there was a recommendation to continue to increase it another 2.5% this year. So we might be talking about 10 or more percent um, just in the health insurance line. So just wanted to bring that to your attention. Um, you know, we have a number of options from changing plans to changing benefits to um, doing a variety of different things, but it, it's also likely going to again make us fall below the minimum contribution for uh, the Affordable Care Act so we're going to take that into account as we look at our options but um, did want to mention that you know in January we'll have a better idea from Maya what, what it's going to be um, but I didn't I wanted to mention it in case we should be bringing the insurance advisory committee back to start thinking about it now um, if you have any initial, I mean, I, I don't know that they need to get started immediately, but I wanted to at least get the ball rolling and, and put it in your heads that, that we're probably going to have to look at insurance again this year. Hmm. And Crystal, that was a committee you were on, is that correct? No. no. I was, yeah. was it Tommy who was on that? There was no, no select board. It was. Oh, no, uh, that's right. That was the one that we got from, from the, yeah. the members of the departments. Okay. Exactly. Um, would we call the same members, or would we open it up again for a new slate? I mean, I think that having the same members makes some amount of sense, uh, assuming they're willing to serve again, um, just because they have the history. But um, is that something you could reach out to the, the members from last year and just get a, a pulse on that? Yep. Um, and if all of them are on board, great. If not, then we can start talking about who else we want to try and <laughs> who's short, who are into that. <laughs> I mean, give the wonderful, exciting, super fun opportunity to be part of Town Change. All right. Anything else from you? Uh, that's all. That's all. all right. Anything else from the board before we call it a day? All right. In that case, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I have a motion we adjourn. Second. All right. We have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three nothing. Take us out at 653.